there is a time and age when we are always conflict under in the conflict of the modes of particular nature. So we have to discuss uh, the uh, nature of the three modes because in the material life, even whether you are knowing or unknowing uh, to the nature of the uh, controlling power of this uh, material nature, mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. It is said in Bhagavad Gita, a purusha prakruti sthopi bhumte prakruti jangwara. Purusha means the false enjoyer. We are all false enjoyers. Actual enjoyer is Krishna. Uh, but we want to imitate him. Even though we are in a false body conception, and yet we want to imitate him, exhibit our own individuality and independence. We do not know uh, uh, that somebody will be controlling us, even like that. So Purusha means false and joy. Prakriti is so we in the material nature. Bhumte Prakriti Jangwana. He interacts with the modes of material nature. Everything is made in this material nature through the agency of the modes. <coughs> Suppose if you want to uh, enjoy music, say flute, the flute is made up of material nature. The sound is the precursor of the material nature. Uh, and listening is also one of the senses that we are using in, in uh, material nature. So there are, uh, you know, types of songs which are enlivening and there are blues also. <laughs> Right? And we woo. <laughs> so, who controls those? So we should understand the influence of the three modes of material nature that is so overpowering and make our plans of enjoyment for you. So, Purusha Prakriti Stopi, Bhumte Prakriti Janmona. He is interacting with the three modes only. Huh? Whether he is enjoying or not, it's a different uh, situation. As a hallucination, one may think that he is a king and he is enjoying all that he is conserving. But this thinking doesn't match because this modes are so powerful uh, that we need to understand it pressurizes. So, Karanam Guna Sangasya, the cause of our existence in this material world is Guna Sangasya. And uh, there's a difficult question. How do you get rid of Munasa? Radhika Charana Padma Kevala Shreya Sadhana. Sadhana means residence. Shreya means permanent benefit, not temporary. And uh, uh, <coughs> taking shelter of the holy name Hare Krishna, Hara means Radharani, but through the potency, a potential can be obtained. We are also potency, we are not potential. Uh, so, Karanam Guna Sandhya Sada Sadhyoni We end up into the different species of life, whether it is Sadhyoni or Asatya. Asatyuni is of demons. Satyuni may be of a virtuous demigod. But it is the, the, the main reason is the cause of our association with the modes of material nature that dictate uh, us uh, whether in a household life, brahmacharya life, one of the life, or sannyas. But sannyas are supposed to be overpowering these modes of material nature by keeping themselves in constant association with the pure mode of goodness. So they will not only benefit themselves, but they will also give benefit to the others. Encourage them to rise above the three modes of material nature, because you are not material. 
you are eternal part and parcel of the Supreme and transcendental to the three modes of the Why do you have to undergo these tribulations and <coughs> tossing or dancing like Kataputta um, beads in the hands of my hands. So, uh, this uh, 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 topic has been uh, uh, just taken for the sake of uh, re-evaluating our uh, say way of life or style of life and, and try to correct it. Please listen carefully, I'll go fast. Although peer pressure does not necessarily have to be negative, the term pressure implies that the process of influence people to do things that they may not, they may be resistant to or might not otherwise choose to do. But it certainly has this pressure. You are known by the company you choose. What does company do? Exert some pressure of, of those particular moments. So usually the term peer pressure refers to socially undesirable behaviors such as experimentation with sex, alcohol, and drug use. Rather than socially desirable behaviors such as advancement by academic success, moral, religious, and spiritual activities. Consider the following. Someone said, let's, all women have abortions if they want. The, the whole American society went to three days by permitting abortion, freedom, and now they are regretting and they want to withdraw and put up stricture on no abortion. They won't have to tell their families, even their husbands, and they said, okay, we made laws for them. Then someone wise government official said, since boys will be boys and they are going to do anything, let's give them men all the condoms uh, they want so they can have all the fun they desire. And you say, okay. Yeah. Right from grade nine, the children are given free in the schools. Then someone of our top elected officials say, it doesn't matter what we do in private as long as we do our jobs. They agree with them, we say, it doesn't matter to me what anyone, including the president, does in private. <laughs> this was made during the time of Jordan Kennedy. I'm not, uh, uh, Clinton, yes. As long as I have the job and economy is good, no I okay. Then the environment, uh, entertainment industry says, let's make TV shows and movies that promote profanity, violence, and illicit sex. Let's record music that encourages rape, uh, drugs, murder, suicide, and satanic themes. And we say it's just entertainment. It has no adverse effect. Nobody takes it seriously anyway. So go right ahead, make money. And spoil people. Uh, now we are asking ourselves why our society has no conscience? Why our society has no conscience? Uh, why uh, uh, people don't know right from wrong and why it doesn't bother them to kill strangers, their families, and even themselves? Is it any lie there? Or we have been bombarded every day in and out? of this. How does peer pressure affect us? According to the families and situations we are born into, we may be affected by different modes of nature by the peer pressure. So there are three examples I'll give you. Huh? If we are born into a disruptive or dysfunctional family, Involved in intoxication, illicit activities, sex, gambling, and meat eating, we will be negatively impacted by this peer pressure into similar activities. Uh, 
even though in that circumstance, yadyada charati shrestha tattva eveta rojana. So yad pramanam purute lokastadam uvartate. It applies to a nuclear family even. Disruptive families. If we are born into a successful and ambitious family, we will be affected by attachment to careers, family and enjoying life, will be characterized by never finding true satisfaction despite material so-called success. And this whole material life is an animalistic society. So, vidvaraha kara ustrahi sanstuti narapashu our society is like uh, the representations uh, of doggy's mentality, hoggy's mentality, camel mentality, and ass mentality. They glorify each other. <laughs> so we also glorify each other. <laughs> a dog is glorified by others in his eating habit. And all these four are also in one subject eating habit are glorified. Sastuti Narapashu means glorification of a human animal. So, Dog, and the example is given in Indian circumstances that uh, uh, the kitchen part is towards the end of the house uh, and it has an open uh, backyard. So anything, refuge and other things can be easily disposed. But the dog is waiting in the backyard and somebody is cooking. As soon as she goes away and they cook, the dog is enter, steals, and goes, and run fast. Where? Where nobody is there. And then vomits out, and then again start eating. <laughs> this is called a vantasi mentality. To eat again, uh, once it is engulfed, what's the problem? And other thing is not. In, in Prahlad Maharaj's instruction, they say, chewing the chews, where there is no juice. Eh? Matim na krishnaya sataha parato vahamikto vipati tadda pratana adanta gobi vishatam kamishram unas punashchar vitamchar vana. Chewing the chew, no juice. Yet nobody wants to give up chewing. It's, the miracle comes like that. Chewing the chew. Only flavor was there. The sugar content already went in. But yet, then, then a time was there where the chewing gums were banned and not to be eaten anywhere. Because the kids and everybody chew the gum and live right on the floor or somewhere stick underneath. <laughs> underneath the desk. So it becomes a pernicious problem and the government has to pass law. And chewing in public is, you know, uh, offensive. Anyway, so this dog is ending up chewing the chew and he thinks he's. So this peculiarity of eating habit is glorified for the dog. <laughs> Second is uh, hog. Give him hot halwa, but he would prefer only hot uh, stool. Eh? Yeah. That is his peculiarity. The third one is camel. He eats thorny bushes, which 
penetrate his tongue and pulls it out blood, but he thinks, oh, it tastes very nice. <laughs> so he's chewing, his habit is, you know, mixed with his own blood, as if he's putting down tomato ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth one says, yes. Huh? Yes, what's hard? Huh? Just for little grass. Prabhupada said, the S doesn't know the grass is everywhere. Why does he have to work hard to eat little grass? So this kind of uh, mentality is there. Swavit Varaha Ustra Karana. Nagapasha Yat Karana Pato Petho Jatu Mahangata. They never care to uh, listen to the topics of the transcendental nature of So men like such mentality do not care. So you can't talk much from them. All right? So <clears throat> if we are fortunate to be born in a pious and religious family, we will be influenced by modes of, more of goodness to act piously. We will be able to act according to the proper and religious See, this is important. The choice is ours, right? What effects does the peer pressure have? This influences the peer pressure of modes of nature is endemic in this material world, with the exception of few fortunate souls who take up the process of purification from material attachment by devotional service. So in Bhagavad Gita, 14th chapter, 5 to 13 verses are very important. Uh, they say material nature consists of three groups of uh, goodness, passion and ignorance. When eternal living entity comes in contact with nature, almighty young virgin, he becomes conditioned by this mode. We are conditioned by the mode. And then we are looking for ideal for Grasthash. Check out for ourselves. O oh, sinless one, the mode of goodness being purer than the others is illuminating and it frees one from all sinful reactions. Those situated in the, this mode um, become conditioned by a sense of happiness and knowledge. That is the mode of goodness. Uh, sense of happiness and knowledge. These two are resultant uh, things that come. Uh, mode of passion is born of unlimited desires and longings. Also of Kunti, and because of this, the temporary living entity is bound to material interactions. Uh, oh, I'm so busy. I don't have time. Children. What can I do in this competitive world? We have to keep pace with the society. But children are going to, they are part of the society, they are going to be the future of the society. You don't have time for that. That's not good. Also, oh, of Bharat, know that the mode of darkness born of ignorance is delusion of all embodied living entities. The result of this mode. Madness, indolence, and sleep, which bind the conditions of Sometimes the mode of goodness becomes prominent, defeating the mode of passion and ignorance. Or son of Bara, sometimes the mode of passion defeats goodness and ignorance. And other times ignorance defeats goodness and passion. In this way, there is always competition, positiveness, a predominance of the more they compete with the each other. The manifestation of more of goodness can be experienced when all the gates of the body are illumined by knowledge. How many gates we have? Seven. Nine. And all gates have to be illumined. The gates, bulbs should not be out. <laughs> they must be aware. Because they are the gates of the 
lower mode. But if they are uh, aware, they say, oh, when a person dies with uh, open mouth, uh, then we consider him that he has gone um, to a higher status of life. Uh, one who leaves the body, uh, you know, in fear, generally they pass too. And their life force has gone through that. Why all this are? If all the gates are illumined by the knowledge and perspective that uh, we are not subjugated to those kind of, you know, uh, conditions at the time of death, uh, they help you control. Okay, even Krishna makes an uh, arrangement they, uh, that <coughs> It is the function of the demigods to control all the in internal activities of our body. <coughs> You'll be surprised. Uh, the same in the Shastra. Lord Ganesh is controlling the gate of uh, the, the lower gate okay, passing the street. Most of the people who are in bodily conception of life, uh, they generally pass to while you're in the box. They say box. If that gate is illuminated by control and everything, then you would not suffer. In Ayurveda, all these things are taught. It's not orthodox. But uh, because Krishna is indicating, we must see what is the reference and how do we understand this. Yeah. O chief of the Bharatas, when there is an increase in the mode of passion, the symptoms of great attachment, fruitive activity, intense endeavor, and uncontrollable desire <coughs> and anchoring development. When there is an increase in the mode of ignorance, also no. Kuru, darkness, inertia, madness, and illusion are manifested. So these symptoms are manifesting. When the symptoms manifest, the doctor says, you have this disease. If the doctors can do, but doctors do not think of in the terms of the cause of association with those modes. They are not talking, but in Ayurveda, yes. Mode of patient makes us want to fit in with the group and not to be left out, despite what they may be doing. We don't consider. So, man is known by the company he keeps, and he will develop that influence. Mode of ignorance makes us not care to discriminate what we are doing, are going to do, whether it is good for us or bad for us. No discrimination. Mode of goodness allows us to use our intelligence to determine what action will be for our long-term benefit. That is it. Understand that it's easy to grasp. There is a stimulus. The stimulus is the mode. We give response uh, it's governed by the previous uh, subconscious conditioning that we carry through the mind agency of mind, intelligence and ego. They travel with us into another country. So it depends upon what kind of desire we left. At the time of quitting the body, we'll certainly get into that mode. So, modes are also uh, coming as a, as a, as a resultant uh, lifestyle in our previous life. Well, that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. Don't worry. I'm, I'm too much of that boy. You think my feet are cold?
Okay, so uh, the subconscious confusion is playing an important. So the mode of ignorance, mode of passion, if our previous condition, most of us are born in mode of passion and ignorance. There is a little tinge of goodness which we'll be carrying out at the end of the next slide. The stimulus for uh, use of intelligence, a discriminating faculty, you know, puts up into uh, the position of, uh, that is assisted by the po uh, positive light transitions, uh, that is called the sanskaras. For coming into more and um, passion and ignorance, uh, you do not need sanskar. But those, uh, in a civilized society, uh, we are given 16 sanskaras to develop more of goodness. Uh, right? So, that is the function of the mode of goodness and uh, then we see, listen this equation very carefully, the tree of the light, or the effect of the peer pressure that we are discussing. Peer pressure brings, brings on habits that uh, affect one's destiny. Uh, so a thought, repay action. So an action, repay habit. So a habit, reap a character, and so a character, reap the destiny. Got the idea? So, right from the thought, huh, we have to build the character. What kind of thoughts? Huh? So, when you read Bhagavad Gita, you will have thought of pure goodness. If you chant Hare Krishna, you will have a transcendental mode, not even mode of goodness, passion. You will transcend. So everybody should understand why we are told. Because we don't want to be victimized by the modes of passion and ignorance. So devotional service must be done in happy mood of goodness. But that will help you to transcend uh, parasattva, that is uh, superior mode, and that is fact pure goodness, only Lord Vishnu. So you are coming closer to Lord Vishnu. And Vishuddha Sattva, you will transcend even that uh, Adhyatma or spiritual mode into uh, the uh, status of Krishna consciousness. <coughs> Means uh, Krishna is always staying in more of pure goodness. Satvam Vishuddham Vasudeva Satvam. Lord Krishna is Vishuddha Satva. And this is Lord Shiva is explaining to Bhagavad. Uh, listen, Lord Krishna is not like us in the material mode. Vishuddha Sattva. So, we go further. Why not just join and become part of our group? Group is In society there are various groups, various clubs. And they were also saying uh, in the beginning, uh, there are various clubs in this form also. <laughs> they were criticizing GBC in the beginning. What? God bathing club. <laughs> God bathing club. <laughs> that means. You know, a built up uh, area where you put, uh, go in the river, you know, the steps are called ghat. Okay? And 
they all want to go and, and try to, you know, be in that group. So, GBC is good to find in one group, then assistant I have another group, the common the presidents have another group. But this group uh, supposed to think of God of pure goodness on this. Every level, right from an individual temple to the hierarchy, there may be group. Group association is required. But this is a positive application of the moral transcendence. Prabhupada said, what should GBC do when they meet? They do Krishna Katha and when they talk out what is next year's plan. They take the, the notes what will be achieved so far. This is all. This three cardinal instructions should have performed in this business. So everyone has scrutinizingly studied the rule I and mean, the resolutions that have been found, whether it be a benefit of the society. Whether uh, any misunderstandings of or uh, taking disadvantage of any weakness in governance that there uh, it should be corrected. So only on a positive note, uh, groups are okay. But uh, they are not like a uh, you know, useless group. And they have yet. Uh, this diversification is for the unity of Krishna consciousness. That should be the Aim. So, they also select out newer and sincere devotees to be added in uh, the groups. After all, if everybody does it, it can't be that bad. For it, it applies to every group in those particular modes. Our ISKCON group must transcend the mode of goodness and at least uh, active remain in Parasattva state. If Parasattva is anticipated. And it is for the, even the president has to Why their habits are bad even though they feel good? You understand, right? Okay. Why habits are there? Turn right on, turn right on. Although they feel good, no illicit sex. Okay. By indulging in illicit sex, one loses purity, wisdom, peace of mind, self confidence, cleanliness, concentration, determination, which are the power of inquiry. Uh, dharana shakti means power to grasp and we make discrimination power. We make. Is the voice to the vision, what goes on the screen, movie, social media, yes, anyway, yes. can give it subtly to this. Definitely. Uh, what Shah Khan and Salman Khan are trying to produce. <laughs> Life is good. Why bad habits are bad? Another example, no meat eating. When animals are slaughtered, their minds are filled with negative emotions of fear and violence, leading to adrenaline secretion. That's a gland sitting on the top of Yes. Little cap on the feet, this adrenaline band. And the secret fear uh, suppression, uh, fear of death is there, so uh, animals can fail. And they start secreting in order to make everything effective. Uh, so when we eat their meat, our minds become filled with similar negative emotions. Don't touch hot dogs. 
<laughs> no intoxication. Drugs initially give a feeling of elation, but as soon as make one glide down to depression. By consuming intoxication, your mind is not your own anymore. The devil controls it. It gives immediate flickering gratification without caring for the most dangerous consequences, sometimes even death. No gambling. Gambling leads to daydreaming, stripping us of the mental energy to utilize present opportunities. Becoming greedy to accumulate money, one may beg, borrow, steal, or even go to the extent of murder. So, it is the modes of influencing the human uh, being to go to animal life. Refrain from agents harmful to your body, mind, and well-being. What do you think? This body? You never heard before. See the big machine. You have to ask me questions. See the big machine. Okay. Non-veg, intoxication, uh, gambling and illicit sex, for uh, the refrain that we are behaving. Uh, those are the ingredients. Uh, you can say, hey, the coke is not written. <laughs> It's tea and coffee only you return. Coca-Cola is not written. So, so kind of compromises that. And it is the extra marital sex, boxing films, vulgar talks. Everything has to be avoided. Now, understanding the mind. Mind is like a machine. Huh? Mind can make you happy or miserable, positive or negative, friend or enemy, active or lazy, calm or agitated. Did Krishna say huh? something about the mind? Huh? If you can control your mind, he will act like a friend, otherwise he is the worst of the enemy. Manahi eva manushyana karanam pandha mokshaya. Even that mind itself is responsible to liberate us or put it under condition. So how long we can stay conditioned? In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna explains seven four earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego. All together, this eight constitute my separate and material energies. Besides this almighty armed Arjun, there is another superior energy of mind which comprises of living entities who are exploiting the resources of this material very uh, inferior nature. The sustenance of the consumerism starts from the uh, the uh, jiva. Because it wants to exploit the resource of material. All created beings have their souls in these two natures uh, of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world. Know for certain that I am both the origin and the uh, I'm your, your mind, uh, you are out of your mind. What does that say? Very important. I'm out of your mind. But you are not here. Huh? 
The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts due to conditioned life. They are struggling very hard with the six senses which include the mind. Manushashtani Indriyani Prakriti Shashati Karsati means struggle. The living entity in the material world carries its different conceptions of life from one body to another as their air carries aroma. Thus he takes one kind of body again and quits to take another. And so even in our growth, the mind takes, mind is influenced by the changes in the body, the hormonal changes. So it sends us into another world of say fantasy, confusion, no cooperation. Everything is there. And everybody faces with the growing children. So the living entity thus taking another gross body obtains a certain type of ear, eyes, tongue, nose and sense of touch which are growth about the mind and thus the en he enjoys a particular set of sense objects. Our, our, our choice becomes different at different ages. You do not play with the dogs anymore. Again, 15th chapter, 10th verse is, the police cannot understand how a living entity can quit his body, nor can they understand what sort of the body he enjoys under the spell of the modes of nature. But one whose eyes are trained in the knowledge can see all this. These are the information of real knowledge. And if they are not trained, then what will happen? So they do this. Right? We are the architect of our own future. But we do not know the knowledge how to you know, put up infrastructure in our life of character. Uh -huh. The working senses are superior to dull matter, mind is higher than the senses, intelligence is still higher than the mind, and the soul is even higher than the intelligence. The closeness of our soul is to intelligence, not to the mind. Mind has closeness to the senses. So why do we have to depend upon mind? Mind is a, a very distracting element. Therefore we must conquer the mind right from the beginning. Brahmachari Guru Gule Vasodantam Guru Ritam to control not for his benefit he is going to Guru, but for the benefit of his Guru, where he will be trained. Uh, oh, go to school, you will be benefited for what? Benefited by the effects of these three modes. And in the school, nobody teaches uh, even more of good, goodness as the predominant. Only passion and ignorance. So, what is the value of such education? Uh, can earn money by which you can fulfill your passionate nature? No. You are more than that. Uh, so, don't be miser in getting that kind of education. The real education we have to learn through our son's powers. Thus knowing oneself to be the transcendent to the material senses, mind and intelligence. O oh, mighty Ankar Jun, one should steady the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence, Krishna consciousness, and thus by spiritual strength conquer this insatiable enemy known as lust. Lust is a product of passion, mode of passion. So how this mechanism works? The intelligence is the decision maker. The mind is the storehouse of habits, unfulfilled desires and previous experiences. 
If they become prominent and make the foundation of our life, it's completely uh, most of us are in a public school setting, all our children are going there. So in this setting, where the mood of ignorance and passion is high in that education, what is it that is there for us as parents and families that we can do to our children so they can anchor to more of goodness, sustain that? So a navigation for us to this, whenever you think If we analyze problem. the modern education, it is a passionate education without the consequences. They don't care for the consequences. Where it will break <coughs> They are generated by mode of passion, but the result of mode of passion is an unsatiable desire will uh, divert your uh, mind to commit anything and everything just to <coughs> fulfill that unsatiable desire. Means what we are, we will become victimized. And when uh, the desire is not satisfied, it turns into regret. And one who cannot control that, he loses. What that you can do in those You can make a chart uh, and, and, and see how does it fit. And put alternative. For that the best is conscious activities, engagement, what they are doing right now is just an unparalleled and uh, you can't get better off. Okay? So understand the value of the consciousness uh, and the only alternative. Draw one, draw. Uh, but what we have to learn is uh, how to become a uh, master of our own. If we have conquered our mind, Mind will be the best of the friends and will not disturb you. But you should be the conqueror of the friends. A routine to include the mind. Give up the false association. Give up many things. You have alternative. Why don't you make an intermediate choice? Say yes to Krishna. How long you are going to say yes to your unsentient question? So, uh, so mind is the storehouse of habits, unfulfilled desires, and previous experiences, where the senses are being exploited. <coughs> These senses, five senses, are given to us to know about our reality. No. Oh. Who are we and what are we supposed to do? But if we misuse the senses, function, and just gratify them, then uh, the purpose of consciousness is for you. Chariot of the... You, you know this. Everybody knows this. Chariot of the body. Five senses are five horses. Mind is the rain in the hands of intelligence. And soul is only a passenger. Huh? If the intelligence doesn't have the rain uh, tied to control the horses, then what happens? All the horses will go in their different directions. Huh? What will be the situation of the chain? It's going to collapse. And what will be the position of the soul? It's in total bewilderment. The various situation. Now, we have to do, use this mental dialogue. Okay? Smoking heavy. Now, mind fails. <laughs> I'm an engineer. 
and I should know how to hold this guitar. <laughs> I'm educated. I want to show. Huh? <laughs> Style. <laughs> That's a bad habit. Intelligence should think like this. Not good for you. Your parents won't like to see you doing this. You may become addicted to it. Don't get into wrong track. Right? So this kind of dialogue should go. I think it is fun. Everyone is doing it anyway. I should experience what's life at least once. <laughs> but you fool, why do you hurt yourself by this bad habit that wastes your money, ruins your good health, and may cause you cancer in the future? Stop it. Don't even dream about it, and you can file a lawsuit against it. <coughs> More it's what? The biggest tobacco company in Virginia? Yeah. Marlboro. <laughs> Mental dialogues. You should, you should always remain proactive towards thinking. That is called mental dialogue. If mind stronger, mind wins. Uh, you succumb to a bad habit. If intelligence is stronger, uh, you can resist the temptation. What should be more strong, mind or intelligence? Intelligence. Intelligence. You are intelligent. <laughs> Yes, look at Prabhupada, PJ. We need to, de uh, to develop spiritual intelligence. You know what is spiritual intelligence? Uh, so SQ. Otherwise, IQ means idiotic. Quotient also. IQ means uh, uh, ignorance quotient. <laughs> what is this IQ? There is no question in the Mensa that was uh, the standard of, you know, responding to the question. There is no question pertaining to uh, spiritual, spiritual activity, uh, as if it's not existing. Uh, and they want to give on the uh, an informative uh, on all different subjects of contemporary knowledge. Uh, and if you answer few questions, uh, you will be considered a very high IQ. What is the point? Uh, uh, 260 plus IQ is called very intelligent. And Bill Clinton had that. <laughs> but do you think he won his life? No. Intelligence doesn't mean that it's an ignorant quotient. Spiritual quotient is the real measure. Ha! Ah, your choice will mold your future. Okay? Don't say, I didn't know. You must know. Life is made up of choices. The choices decide our future. Habits activate choices. Now stop bad habits. Abstain from bad people and bad objects. Supplement with good habits. Sustain with good association and good objects. Sustain through introspection and self-correction that is yet to come in children. We should not impose that. But at least you should have good association. This association is the best. You can't bear it. Okay. Stay away from tempting environment and association. Uh, steps towards uh, changing the behavior. All right. What is the step first? Uh, 
unconscious incompetence, uh, incompetence uh, is there, then conscious competence is, incompetence is there. Incompetence means you can't compete with others. And unknowing is because you are not aware that you will have to compete in the society. Uh, then even in marriage, competence is, is, is generally uh, measured whether the uh, competent nature of both husband and wife is there, projections are there, you know. So, uh, but if one is unconscious of the competence, uh, then there is a step that how uh, you are aware, you are taught that what are the uh, traits that we have to just, just to feel like a complementary, uh, you know, any. If some, uh, if a, if a wife has a better, uh, say, um, accounting power or economic power, then the extravagancy of uh, husband can be controlled, right? The Indian ladies are very powerful, <laughs> very powerful. Uh, and previous time they were not earning money, but yet uh, they will get money and they spend frugally and save money and put behind the deities so nobody can steal. <laughs> <laughs> but. That economy, you know, is well, very well appreciated because they were the saviors of emergency times. You know, so consciousness is there, but incompetence is there. It's not compatibility is not there. So that is the second stage. Now conscious and competence come. It's a development. By experience, this, this uh, household, uh, you know, adjustments are coming, and we expect from the partner uh, that they become competent. The conscious competence is there, and unconscious competence is also there. Uh, you are competent, but you don't have to make somebody feel inferior. That is a promoting, encouraging uh, idea. Uh, so stay unconscious. Means uh, do not project uh, that, oh, you are aware of it. No, no, keep it silent because it glorifies the functionality of uh, the counterpart. You know, uh, appreciate it. Yes. So, you become, you know, very well appreciated in your contribution to the ideal rest of life. Uh, how to transform negative fear pressure by applying spiritual solutions to the material problems? 